We have a very small country in Central America called El Salvador, and its capital city is San Salvador. About 12 kilometers south of San Salvador, there is a small town called Nuevo Cuscatlan. In the year 2012, this tiny town that was not that tiny anymore is up for re-election to choose their next mayor. We have a young 30-year-old named Naya Bukele that wins this election by a small margin and he becomes the new mayor of Nuevo Cuscatlan. When you compare this election to the entire country of El Salvador, it didn't even seem important. But when Mr. Bukele was chosen as the next mayor of this town, it changed El Salvador's fate forever. Even though he ran as a left-wing liberal, but when he was chosen, he literally put liberalism aside and focused on what is important. His main goal was battling corruption and of course the very powerful cartels that pretty much ran the country. But why did this tiny country change forever? For many decades, El Salvador was known as the most dangerous country in the world. So when Bukele starts working in his tiny town of Cuscalan, not only is the cartel out of there and they don't have true power anymore, but he makes school available for all children in this town. And his goal was to teach children to not join these cartels and rather go to school and get an education. Before this date, 15% of the kids in Nuevo Scotlan grew without an education. But when Bukele became mayor, that 15% turned into zero. And that means he put 100% of the kids to school. After three years of being mayor of this tiny town, only one person was murdered. And for El Salvador, that's amazing. And that showed us that Bukele is doing something right. Obviously, Bukele was much younger than any other politician in El Salvador. So he was always having new ideas and modern solutions. He also has a YouTube channel and whatever he did, he would film it and upload it on YouTube. And this channel is still around today. By having this YouTube channel, Bukele's fame was not only in this small town, but it went to the whole country. Since Bukele had gotten pretty famous in the political world, in the next election, he participated in the mayor of San Salvador, the capital of the entire country of El Salvador. And since he was loved, he won the election by a landslide. He continues doing the same thing he did in Nueva Cuscalan. He gets rid of corruption, and most importantly, he gets rid of the cartel that has been running the place the entire time. So when Sal Salvador turns out to be much better when Bukele is running it, that's when the next election comes around for being the president of El Salvador. And who does everybody want? Bukele. Bukele becomes a candidate and easily wins the presidency. But it's interesting to know how he got in this position because it was not easy whatsoever. When you look at the murder rate per country, El Salvador is first in the year 2015. And per 100,000 people in this country, 103 of them were murdered. And next to this statistic, per every 100,000 person, 579 of them are in prison. And of course, most of them are cartel members and gangsters. In Latin America, there is a mafia group called MS-13, and they have a huge presence in El Salvador, one of the most brutal gangs in the world. A lot of people believe that the El Salvadoran government had nothing to say compared to the MS-13. You could say they had the whole country in their hands. This is how the corruption worked. Any politician that got a job in government, they would receive payments from these mafia groups and do what's best for these groups. In El Salvador, you have two parties, FMLN and ARENA. And Bukele was part of the FMLN. But because these two parties were scared of the mafias, they basically disowned him and told him he's not fit to be president and you shouldn't vote for him. When these parties did this, it basically made Bukele more special and famous because now they were sure that the system is corrupt and Bukele is there to save them. He very easily had speeches where he 
dissed these parties and told them they're paid by these mafias to not do anything about the safety of your country. Either way, Bukele wins the election and becomes the president. In El Salvador, these mafias are not all in one group. They're scattered throughout the country. And one of the first things Bukele does is get his army and make them a little bit stronger. And all of a sudden, surprise attack the areas that these mafias and gang groups are controlling. And by doing this, you get rid of how organized they are because they scatter everywhere. And when they take control of that area, start arresting the members. This strategy works very well. And in a very short period of time, most of the country is much safer. Bukele does what he does best. He start building schools and parks where the children can grow as children and not want to be in a gang. He believes it's most importantly to teach children because it's these kids that grow up and enter these gangs and that allows them to not ever be eliminated. If we teach the kids how the world works, they would never even consider joining them. The more we move forward, the more powerful the El Salvadoran army gets. But not to fight a war with its neighbor, to fight these crime groups and these gangsters. And these guys are much more dangerous than El Salvador's neighbors. When Bukele realized that his government doesn't want to listen to some of the things he wants, he does some dictator tactics. Like for example, he wanted a $50 million loan for equipment for the army and they weren't having it. So he brought the entire army to the parliament and basically forcefully got their positive vote. What do you think this is called? Is it a dictatorship or is it forcing people to pass a law that's better for the country? Please let us know. Bukele finally did the impossible. He made one of the most dangerous countries in the history of the world to something that's safe. And to execute a plan like this, he has to forcefully pass some laws. Like during COVID-19 lockdowns, if you weren't wearing a mask, you would be arrested. And that was no joke. That's how serious they took it. The other parties would complain and say, you can't arrest someone for not wearing a mask. But he wouldn't listen to them. The power was on his side and nobody could speak over him. Even though the parliament, the Supreme Court of El Salvador, and a lot of the government politicians wouldn't agree with Bukele, but more than 90% of the people were his fans and approved of his decisions. And they believed this is the only president that was able to make the country somewhat better. We get to the year 2021, when there's another election for the Supreme Court and the parliament. And of course, the election result made Bukele's power much higher, because not only did he control the parliament now, he also controls the Supreme Court of El Salvador. So you could say Bukele had absolute power in El Salvador. And this power allowed him to pass whatever law he thought that was good. Everything was going well in El Salvador, but on the 22nd of March 2022, it seems like some underground mafias were feeling feisty and they decided to attack regular people in a certain town and they murder 87 people in the streets. Bukele was so furious that he orders his army, whoever you see and find them suspicious, arrest them without a question. He also added plenty of other things like arrest people with tattoos, arrest people that have no shirt on because when they don't wear a shirt, they're most likely in a mafia. If he looks suspicious, arrest them. Some say killing 87 people was done by Bukele to basically clean up the streets and find the mafia members that were hiding. In a very short period of time, more than 70,000 men were arrested. This country doesn't have a huge population. And when the statistics posted, about 2% of the entire country was inside the prison. A lot of these prisoners are still inside the prison and some of them did nothing wrong. But until they're not sure, they're not gonna let them go 
and they don't tell their family members why they are in prison. Before he executed this plan, he also created a brand new prison, which is basically a prison for El Salvadoran terrorists. All the men that were arrested were taken to this prison, which is very modern and it's the biggest one in the world, and it holds 40,000 inmates. The most brutal gangs in the world, which are the MS-13, when they hear the word of this prison, they start shaking. That's how scary it is for them. Even though the things Bukela has done were very radical, but he did good things with it on the side. After 50 years of unsafe and one of the most dangerous countries in the world, he has finally turned his country around. Out of the things he executed, one of the most important things he did was get rid of the corruption. And the corruption was basically the root of the gangsters and mafias. The next election of El Salvador is in 5 months and Bukele says he's running again. But the El Salvador constitution says you can't run more than 4 years. But Bukele has absolute power and the people love him. Some call him a democratic dictator because he's a dictator that was voted in by the people. The UN talks bad about Bukele. A lot of Western countries and politicians and news networks talk bad about him. But what's important is that the people of El Salvador are very happy with him and his approval rating is about 90%. And the citizens of a country realize if their country is doing well or not. And it's not up to other countries and other politicians to tell them what to do. What do you guys think? If you were a citizen of El Salvador, would you vote for him?